Hi there, so just a very quick video to talk about um, some pre-work I'm doing. So the next thing I'm doing is introducing the concept of buckets. So if you think of buckets as like uh, areas of storage, like virtual constructs, not really physical. So for example, I might create a bucket and put um, every information about I've got about books in my application in it. I have another bucket for my users. So um, they're kind of logical separations. But in order to do that, in order for that to be efficient, um, without affecting how it's stored on disk, I need to introduce the um, concept of a reverse index. So have uh, the value of the bucket listed against um, the content of those buckets. And similarly with um, the keys, um, I'm going to want to start not using the raw key value to reference the key uh, in those indexes because it can be quite long. So what I want to do is like I do in my in-memory cache on disk I want to have a hashing function. Now ideally a hashing function should be the same on disk as it is in memory because otherwise I have to rehash everything every time I load it off disk or save it to disk. I don't want to do that. So I need to override the default hashing function that's in memory um, and use the same one on disk as that's in memory. The other complication I've got is I need to make sure for a database that this hash function does not easily have collision. So for different values, a lot of fast hash functions will have collisions in particular parts of the key space. Now for applications and their keys, they tend to be, you know, follow a fixed format in a particular application like slash books, slash fiction, slash then the book ID. So if a particular pattern or segment of keys can clash, that introduces performance issues. The other issue you've got is even though the hashes we typically use in applications are not cryptographically secure hashes because we want speed not uh, you know not to prevent the reversing of the hash to the original value um, there are some attacks that have been reported recently against hashing functions um, so we need to make sure it's relatively secure um, yet still fast enough for our application so I've been doing a lot of research into this and I'm just going to give you the conclusions so our unordered map, as luck would have it, um, and I'll just zoom in here for people, the unordered map implementation, uh, I've only been specifying the key and the type of the value, so string string, but you can also specify a hashing function, and that hashing function basically has to stick to a very straightforward um, pattern, and that's effectively, you have to implement um, the operator. So for example, you have to implement this, so in C++, as well as having named um, functions, you can also override operators, so plus, minus, um, you know, divide, you name it, on, and this operator, which is effectively a function call operator. Once you've instantiated your class, you can effectively encode, it looks like you're calling it as a function and you're passing a value. So here we're passing you know, the, the type S as the value uh, to do the hash. So we can override that. So I've, I've overridden it and I've had a look around different hashing functions for one that's secure but fast. And there's a whole range of different things you could do here as well. So I did some performance uh, research as well as security research. And this is just initial research. It's not meant to be comprehensive and have every hashing function in it. And there's a this list here and this is going to be within the uh, repo as well. This link here takes you to a fantastic web page that I've been using, which is this one, um, which is the uh, SM Hasher or Smasher um, tests for hashes. And it bakes in a lot of tests for hashes. One it doesn't include, though, is, um, well, one that's described further down here. It's basically a hash collision. Um, so the default hash that's used in C or in GNU's. Plus plus library is Murma hash and line two, um, which was introduced as a faster hash function in order to speed up um, a lot of you know, the default C plus plus hash table implementations like unordered map, um, which is good and it's very simple. It's got a good distribution, good collision resistance. However, it is susceptible to hash DOS attacks, um, which is an interesting type of attack. Um, so the people who came up with the, this attack documentation also introduced the hash for themselves, Rip hash 2.4. Um, again, is relatively fast. I mean, much faster than these cryptographically, you know, cryptographic ones. 
these are not secure. I wouldn't call them secure. Um, <laughs> and especially that one is known to be broken. Um, but these are kind of common modern hash functions out there, so they're relatively slow in short terms. And so these are fast, if you like, hash functions. Um, and so we see that you know, this is a, an improvement, but um, 1364 bit versions of this one produce different hashes. Now that is an issue for me. Because what I want to do is I want this database to run on a wide variety of platforms and I want it to run on very, very small platforms with just um, you know, very small bit uh, values. So I want to be able to make sure that my hashing function can be implemented just in software um, on lower um, bit uh, operating, um, basically. So not just 32 and 64 but bit but even embedded machines if you want as well uh, in memory database and I'll explain why in, in another video um, <clears throat> so I can't really use this one it should be a slight override so OpenSSL and a whole bunch of operating systems and network things have started using SIP hash 24 because of the hash DOS issue um, it effectively makes the performance of a hash table built on um, this have a hash DOS attack it makes it only as performant as a linked list, so it's O N instead of O one while approaching O one. So it's it gets pretty bad. So this is it was introduced as quite a, a, an advanced change. Um but this too is um it's also it was got an overhead but it's also theoretically um uh, weak to some other attacks as well. So what happened is uh, some People at Git, uh, Google, they came up with the concept of a highway hash, which is a very fast hash optimized for SIMD instructions. Um, they also implemented, incidentally, a, a faster and more portable SIP hash implementation. Um, well, this is a portable library, so this will work. It does have just a pure software implementation. It also has accelerated implementations. So when you compile it on uh, like a 64 bit machine like I've got, it will actually be faster. It will get performance increase. It's a pretty good implementation. It's also Apache 2 licensed. I'm moving the library from MIT to Apache 2. Um, reasons I won't bore you with. Uh, and you can also use 6428 and 256-bit uh, implementations, which now ideally I wanted to use 128-bit so I could have um, a wide range of a key space. The bigger your key space, the less likely it is when you scale up the number of records in your database that you're going to have a hash collision. I wanted it to be 128 or 256 now. <laughs> Slight issue is if you look at this um, hash standard implementation, these all return, if I get to the right place, all return a standard size T. On a 64 bit machine, this is 64. Um, so there's no easy way around that I can see other than implement my own map, which I really, really, really don't want to do. Um, so I'm going to avoid that, I'm just going to suck it up and just use a 64 bit um, hash for now. So that gives me something like 16 billion billion uh, potential options, so only 16 billion billion. <laughs> so as long as don't go beyond 16 billion billion database records, we'll be fine. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so after looking through that, got through Google's highway hash and it does mention further down here. Um, what the uh, security claims are so it does say here we go hash flooding this is the attack that was come up with by um, uh, Amazon Bernstein um, when they implemented SIP hash so <clears throat> there are I won't bore you with the information here but there there is effectively a, a PDF here and it says here applications should not use unsafe hash functions unless they trust their input data now the problem is what people tend to do in applications when they write them is they will use user provided information within the key um, or within something that is hashed to create an index. Now the problem with that is if somebody decides to abuse that application they could pollute your indexes slowing everyone's search down for records or even worse, pollute the ability to find records in the first place. So um, this is why I think it's important not to use the default hash functions that are available. So I've gone for the highway hash. 
Uh, so what I've done is I've implemented Highway Hash extension to the back end. This basically wraps the Google um, Highway Hash function in order to provide this, which is what, actually let me zoom in again. A lot of people mentioned to me that this isn't zoomed in enough. Uh, so let me just go to text editor. There we go. There we go. So I've basically wrapped the Google Highway Hash here. So we've pulled that in. Um, and this is basically the uh, um, you know, it's a function form that they're expecting. These are just to save, recreating, and deleting uh, them every time. You'll notice I'm actually using raw pointers here. Um, <clears throat> it is very naughty, but I've got a, a fairly good reason for doing that. Um, I might refactor it later, but basically, this is my implementation. So default hardware hash, we implement the key. So hash functions can be used for cryptography. So they have an initial state. Don't generally set that to zero. It makes it, you know, you can always at the same point. So if I'm doing this, I'm gonna to allow to specify for every um, shard, basically, your own key as the basis of the hash. That just makes it harder for attackers to abuse it. So every time I'm using a hash for a different reason, be it the ID of a key or the ID of an index, I'm going to use a different um, base key value um, just to make it you know, hard to have a universally breaking attack, even if the hash algorithm is compromised. Um, so I've initialized that. Uh, yeah, this is brace initialization. That's because this is actually it's underlying types an array. There is a of thought that says you should prefer brace initialization anyway that's a separate thing um and then this is the hardware hash implementation which is based on the key um and then the result which is just effectively a, a, have a single value on array depending on what size it is so what i've done here is instead of using this and creating these things each time and throwing them away at the end i'm basically using same saved value to save me a few cycles and that didn't save me much to be fair on the implementation it saved me maybe um, I think five to ten percent of performance, but uh, that was useful. So I'm basically resetting every time you pass a value in to calculate a hash, you've got to reset the state to the initial state, otherwise, use rubbish um, and things that are unpredictable. And then I append the data that we've done, so that calculates the hash effectively. And then this finalizes the hash and gives me the result back into this uh, variable. And then I'm just returning a copy of the value of that variable rather than the pointer to. Um, so effectively, if we get rid of this now, um, that's effectively what we're testing. Now, I did write my test first, I hasten to add. So in the hashing tests, uh, I want to test unordered map with custom hashing algorithm. So first of all, I need to test that my wrapper produces the same thing as the underlying hashing algorithm. Make sure that that works. Um, I then want to make sure that calculating a hash and then using the same uh, highway hash instance I'm basically doing and asking that to calculate a new hash the, the, the second one's not affected by the first one so here I'm creating a hash but other thing just as the only thing that's created in that and then I'm doing something before it and then doing it I'm making sure that R1 and R2 result is different and that R1 uh, here is not the same as this one and that this one is the same as this one okay so just and then different seed keys, different results to make sure that the seed key thing's working. So same <clears throat> value that we're outputting, but different seed keys. Um, and that does work. And then unordered map works as expected with this custom hash. So once I know the hash wrapper itself is working, um, I've actually applied this into an unordered map. So I've got two key values there and I'm putting them in. I'm making sure that the right key comes back with the right value. So, well, A, it's coming back with the value, and B, it's coming back with the right value. Um, so they all pass, they all run. Now, performance-wise, um, what I've done in measured performance, uh, theoretically, we should be three times faster. Um, but I think because I've implemented it in a very haphazard way, um, this is the performance of the in-memory. Uh, you remember we wrote the performance test before. All I've basically done is rerun the performance tests. So um here we were getting a million uh inserts a second and 1.6 million people a second that's actually got worse 
So we've actually dropped um, to 46% of the insert speed and 29% of the retrieval speed. So um, I suspect that maybe the I, I've allowed the compiler to choose which implementation to use and maybe on a Mac it, it chooses the wrong one. So I've got a bit of work to do there. But to be fair, I'm happy with that performance anyway because that is the equivalent of um, you know that that's the number of values per second. So if you talk, you know, normally you talk about you know, one millisecond for a key value store to store a retriever value. That's effectively a you know, um, a five hundredth or something of um, not yeah. Yeah, one five hundredth of a second or something. So it's like I'm not too worried at all. Um, so yeah, because this is effectively records per second. So that's four hundred sixty-two inserts per millisecond. So that's what not point. Yeah, not point none or not two or something um, milliseconds for an insert. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but again. Compromise, compromise. There's always compromises in computing. That's what you get. So I've now implemented that and it works brilliantly. So um, going on here, what I'm going to do next is implement in the next video bucketing. Um, so you'll get that in the following days. Um, and um, yeah, so that'll all be interesting. We start talking about indexing and query and how you can improve performance uh, on there as well. So. Thanks for sticking in this video and um, I hope you enjoyed it um, and we'll use this implementation under the hood from now on. Thanks.